So good morning, Heart of Worship Community Church. And those that are watching through live stream, and those that will be watching the recorded version, it's just a blessing that we can continue not only to hear the Word of God, to be comforted and encouraged by it, strengthened, equipped, as we continue our lives in this difficult days. If you have your Bibles, I would invite you now to get them and turn them to Daniel in the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 3. If you are able to stand, please let us stand as we read the Word of God and honor Him. Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was... 60 cubits and its width six cubits he set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon and king nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps the administrators the governors the counselors and the treasurers the judges and the magistrates and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which king nebuchadnezzar had set up so the satraps and the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, Lear the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So at the time when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and the lyre, and symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, of flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you should not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But even if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Let us pray. Here we are, our heavenly Father. Children called by your name. Even the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. As we have read your words, speak to us now. We know that you are in our midst and we honor you. And let this time, Lord God, be a time of 
experiencing the powerful work of your Holy Spirit in our hearts as we hear and receive your words with gladness. Especially as we live in a time in this world, even in this nation, that is dark and getting darker. But you've called us, Lord, to be the lights and to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Lord, you have called us, and this is the time. If, if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? And so I pray, Lord God, that your word will burn our hearts and burn away that which is not of faith. I pray, Lord God, that you purify us and make us to be the people that you've called us to be. Even now, as we receive your word in Jesus' name, amen. You may all be seated. Our message for this morning, title is, But Even If. Last Sunday, the first Sunday of the year, 2021, the message was about the Lord being our shepherd. And that we are reminded of our need of a shepherd to lead us, to guide us. Not only as we enter this year 2021, but as we live our lives with all these uncertainties in this world that is filled with troubles. That again, we need not to fear nor worry because the Lord is our good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And we are the sheep, his sheep. And as our shepherd, he takes good care of us, feeding us, providing for us, protecting us, leading us, guiding us, renewing us, blessing us, and assuring us of his goodness and mercy all the days of our lives until we are home with him forever in heaven. But it takes faith for us to follow him wherever he leads us. Without faith, one cannot follow Jesus. One must truly believe to trust in the Lord for any of us to faithfully and boldly follow the shepherd of our souls. Sometimes we don't follow because of fear or doubt. We do not trust enough to follow the Lord. And we say we cannot follow him where he leads. But listen, Jesus, our shepherd, will never lead us to where we cannot follow. But we need faith. The but even if kind of faith. What is a but even if faith? It is a faith that continues to trust God and continues to obey His word, even if it does not understand and can, cannot figure things out. Even if it costs something that is of great value. Even if it means it will have to sacrifice. Even if God doesn't seem to come through. It's a faith that even if obeying God would mean our physical lives. It's a faith that will still believe and follow the Lord. Church, we are living in a time here in America... When we need to demonstrate an even if kind of faith. It's a bold faith. Christians who are not afraid of being identified of who they are. Believers and followers of Jesus. Living as light of the world and salt of the earth. Christians who are not intimidated by the mocking of the society and of the world around them. Christians who are not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christians who are different, a good kind of different, not the being weird of being religious and creepy. Christians who are bold and boldly speak the truth in love, not condemningly or being critical, 
but Christians who are real, normal, but radical in their faith. Christians who don't copy the ways of this world just to belong and to be accepted, but are different because they are being transformed by the renewing of their mind with the Word of God. Because the even if kind of faith, that is the genuine faith, comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. It is the Word of God that births, if not produces, biblical Christians, not cultural Christians. There are so many cultural Christians today. Cultural Christians go by what the culture says, which many times goes against what the Bible says. Biblical Christians go by what the Bible says, even though it goes against what the culture says. Christians whose faith are birthed by the Word of God and growing in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. That is a true faith. Not merely an intellectual faith where the person knows and agrees with biblical facts and truths about God, about Jesus intellectually, but a faith where the believer believes in Jesus Christ for who he is, Lord and Savior, and has a personal relationship with him and personally knows him so that the believer believes in the Lord with all of their heart, a heart that is surrendered, submitted, and committed to Jesus and possesses a faith in him that is firm and steadfast, persevering, enduring. A faith that is genuine and private, but bold in public. A faith that will sit with Jesus in a personal, quiet time and will stand for Jesus against the ways of this world, and will walk following Jesus even through the darkest valleys. A faith that is willing to live for Jesus, and if need be, even die for Jesus. A faith that risks to show love and devotion to the Lord. A faith that draws the line and says, I am following Jesus and there is no turning back. I am moving forward, looking unto Jesus, trusting Him. The world behind me and the cross before me, though none go with me, I still will follow. I pray that this day, this morning would be that day for you. If you have not made that decision to believe in Jesus in your heart, and have that faith to follow Jesus with bold, persevering faith, a faith that risks an even-if kind of faith, I pray to God that this will be the day for you. I'm not talking about an ideal faith, but just a real faith, practical. Faith that God wants for us to possess and to live. I'm not even talking about perfection or a perfect faith so that we don't make a mistake or stumble or fall, but a faith that rises up because the Lord raises him up, so that we cling to God with a firm conviction, for we know the one whom we have believed and are persuaded that he, that is Jesus, is able to keep or to guard that which we have committed unto him against that day, so that our faith grows and perseveres and continues to trust and obey even if Things don't go our way. Even if God doesn't answer our prayers the way we wanted. Even if things seem to be impossible or even hopeless. Do you have that kind of faith? The even if kind of faith. You do if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. You have that faith if the object of your faith is Jesus only. If not, then make that decision to believe in Christ alone because God and only God can and will give this faith to those who come to Him. Now, how do we know if we have this kind of faith? How do you know? How can you know that you have this even if kind of faith? Listen, when the pressure of life comes down on you, when life squeezes you, when your faith and your trust in God is challenged and your life even is put on the line, 
What comes out of you? What comes out of you? This is what we see in our text in Daniel chapter 3. The story of the three Hebrew boys. Boys. Not men. Named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Some of you are familiar with the story of these three. Some, maybe, it's your first time to even about, to hear about these Boys with their weird names. They are Babylonian names corresponding to certain gods of the pagan Babylonians. You see, these boys were captured along with many other Israelites when the Babylonians, who were the superpower of that time, invaded Israel and took captives and brought them back to Babylon for slavery and for some to serve as personal aids to the king. Now listen. Listen. We need to understand that Babylon was not only that superpower at the time, and that it was very secular. It was the most godless society and culture ever. You think of Los Angeles or San Francisco or even Vegas and say how secular these cities are. Well, let me tell you, L.A. and San Fro and Vegas and perhaps other similar cities, the cities don't even measure or reach half of Babylonia's godlessness. And it was in this culture that these three Hebrew boys were brought into to be trained and groomed to be in the ranks that would personally serve the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. And they actually rose to prominence of becoming chief advisors of King Nebuchadnezzar. Listen, even though they were captured as slaves, think about that statement for a moment. They were treated as slaves and captured to be so. So many people today give many excuses why they do not or cannot prosper or flourish or be successful in life. Reasons like because of their environment, because of the system they are in. Because of their skin color, white privilege, whatever. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were brought into a foreign land as slaves. In a pagan and the most godless society and culture of that time. Yet these Hebrew boys prospered in their lives and they were successful. And you might wonder how that happened. Well, if you read their story from chapter 1 and you can read that in your own time, you will realize and understand that not only did they survive, but they thrived, they flourished because God was with them. And God's favor, that is God's grace, was upon them. And how they lived by faith showed and demonstrated it to be so. Listen, the presence of God and the goodness of God is not dependent on your environment not dependent on the political system or financial system, and definitely not dependent on the color of your skin. Not dependent on wherever you find yourself in life, but dependent on who God is in your life and who you are in Christ. The favor of God is not hindered because of the unfavorable conditions or situations in your life. The blessings of God is not even dependent on the government or the form of government. Your life success and prosperity, listen, is not dependent on who sits in the White House, but who sits on the throne of your heart. As a child of God and servant of the Lord, you can thrive wherever you are in life. You can and will prosper and be successful in life because, listen, God's goodness and faithfulness is not dictated nor controlled by anything or anyone else but by God alone. And God is good all the time. And He is faithful. If your God I mean, if your faith is in God who is faithful and who is good all the time, and you show or demonstrate 
that faith in how you live by obeying Him, then you will be prosperous and successful. Isn't this what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8? Do not let the book of the law from your mouth depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be what? Prosperous and successful. Our problem, though, is our fleshly definition of prosperity and success. You see, our minds, prosperity and success, it all, it's always about the material and financial and physical. In other words, all the temporal. That includes it, yes, but it's not limited to that. We seem to forget eternal life is a life that has the eternal virtues or qualities of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, even hope that God gave and wants us to prosper in, to be rich in, to be abundant in. As Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly, to be rich and satisfying life. And we know of people who have had millions of dollars but were not satisfied or content. They were rich financially, but they were not rich in peace or joy or even love because this virtues and qualities of life is not dependent on what the world can give, but it's on, dependent on God. Because he alone can give life as he is life. And this is how the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, live their lives. By faith in God whom they believe and know is with them and will never leave them nor forsake them. So that they did not live in excuses, in disappointment, nor discouragement. They did not live in fear, nor intimidation. And neither were they ashamed of their faith nor their God. So that when life and the pressure of life squeezed them, they were able to say with courage, even if. You see, what happened is that the king Nebuchadnezzar, as we have read, you know, he was a very narcissistic despot, a tyrant, a dictator that he believed that he was a God who was worthy of all worship. And so we have to read that he set up not only many false other gods, but an image of gold of himself and made a decree that everyone should bow down and worship and anyone who does not worship and bow down him as represented by the image will be what? Thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. But remember what Shadrach and Meshach Abednego said when they refused to bow down and worship? Well, let's read it again in verse 16 to 18. To 18, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego replied to the king, O king Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. When the pressure of life's moment was upon them, at that very trying moment, these Hebrew boys said these victorious words that reflected their bold, persevering, a willing-to-risk-life kind of faith, the even-if kind of faith. I mean, it's like a movie. When the plot leads to this intense moment and in that one climatic moment, a profound and inspiring and memorable word is spoken. Just like many other movies probably that you have seen and watched. Go into that climax, and then the hero says something that's like reverberating. But not just in movies, but even in real life. 
like Martin Luther King when life's pressure was upon him and the weight of his people stood there in front of Washington Memorial and said the famous words, I have a dream. When they were commanded to worship the other gods, even the king of his, even the king in his image, and warned that they will be thrown into the fiery furnace if they refuse, what did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say? It is there. You can read it. The question is, how are they able to say such words with boldness, confidence, with such faith, to go against what the king said and not bow down, but instead obey God and worship him still, even at the expense of their lives? Well, first, notice their conviction. When challenged, you can save them. They said, our God is able. They knew who their God is. The God who can, the God who is able. That's why they said those words with boldness and no fear. Because they knew their God. Their God is the God who is able. Listen, do you know your God? The Bible declares that our God, Jehovah, the God of wonders, the God of all creation, the God who spoke the universe into existence, with His breath, He spoke galaxies and stars. I mean, just, just imagine for a while. It's like as though as God is standing there and says, stars, <laughs> galaxies. When was the last time you did that? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. He is the God who is able to handle anything that concerns you, whether it be financial, material, physical, relational. I mean, if God was able to handle the impossible that relate to the eternal and spiritual concerns, how much more the temporal I mean, I mean, listen, if God created the heavens and the earth, what is difficult for him? Nothing. If Jesus, who is life, the source of life, and the giver of life, conquered death, what is there even to fear? If Jesus is your God, listen, he is the one who is able to save you, rescue you, deliver you, heal you. The one who is able to resurrect you even if you die. Remember what Jesus said in John eleven twenty five, 25? I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then Jesus said, do you believe this? But do you believe this? Do you know your God? He is the God who can. He is the God who is able but not only is he the God who is able, Jake, I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said that he is the God who will. He is the God who will. It's one thing to know and believe that God can, but it's another thing to know and believe that God will. Listen, Jesus is not only the God who is able, but the God who will. Jesus is willing and he will. The story in Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 to 3, we read of a leper whom no one cared about and no one was even willing to go near to. But when the leper came to Jesus, the leper said to him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am willing. Be clean. You see, not only is Jesus able, but he is willing we need to understand, though, that His will doesn't come always through the way we want or will. That's why we need to trust Him with all our hearts. This is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego declared. So much so that they said in one astounding statement in our text in Daniel chapter 3, verse 18, but even if, but even if, can I say that? Can you say that? Yes, we can if we truly believe in God who is able and a God who will. 
Because the God who's able and the God who will is the God who loved the world, the whole world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. In other words, in other words what? Well, Romans chapter 8 verse 32, it says what? He that is God who did not spare His own Son but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also along with Him graciously give us all things? See that? Meditate on that. Listen, even if God does not give us what we want, we can be rest assured that God will give us what we need and whatever is according to His will, knowing that His will is good and pleasing and acceptable. So that if we need to be rescued or healed or delivered, and if it is in accordance to His will, we will be rescued healed and delivered if we don't get rescued or healed or delivered that means we didn't need to does that make sense even because listen god promised that he will what provide us us what and it will give us, give us what? Everything we need. Sometimes we just want. We really don't need. We think we need, but most of the time it's really just our wants. But God knows our needs, and He is faithful to provide our need. Of course, we always want to be rescued, healed, and delivered. But comes a time when God doesn't rescue or heal or deliver because that is not our need, nor is it God's will. Comes a time when what the believer needs, what the child of God needs, is to come home to Him in heaven. It's time to come home. And God knows that. And in His wisdom and love, God brings His child home to be with Him in heaven permanently, eternally rescued, healed, and delivered. So don't hold on to this life here on earth. Hold on to Jesus who is truly life and the shepherd of your soul. Dear child of God, remember this world is not your home. You and I were just passing through. One day our journey on earth in this life will be done. The reason we're still here is because the Lord wants to use us to tell others about Jesus, of His love, and of His saving grace. And we can do that effectively and boldly as the Holy Spirit enables us because of the faith He gave us. He gave us. Faith in God who is able and the God who will. This is the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is your faith if your faith is in Christ Jesus. But this faith needs to grow. And it will grow when you do what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did. What did they do for their genuine faith to grow and be strong, enduring and persevering, willing to risk and able to say with conviction when the time comes, even if? What did they do? Well, again, you can read chapter 1. You read it in your own time. The whole account. And you will see and understand that these three Hebrew boys were friends with Daniel. Daniel. If you're American, say Daniel. If you know Daniel, he was one who believed in the true God and spent time with God in private prayer. And by inference, because of their friendship or fellowship, if you may, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego also spent private times, prayer times with God. Not only individually, but even corporately as a fellowship group. And that is key for faith to grow into a bold, but even if kind of faith. Before you can go public, you must go private. For faith to be bold in public, it must be real and private. For us to firmly wield the shield of faith out there in the world, it must be welded, forged in times of prayer, sitting, if not kneeling, before the Lord. 
Then after sitting or kneeling before the Lord in prayer in privacy of your personal time with God, then you can stand. Only then you can stand. That's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. When the music and symphony played, everyone bowed down and worshipped the false gods, the idol image of Nebuchadnezzar. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood they went public with their faith. They did not bow down to fear. Listen, now in this time that we live in, now is not the time to kneel out there in the world. It's not the time for us to kneel. It's not the time nor the place to kneel. You do that in your own time with the Lord. I see so many so-called Christians today Sad to say, bowing down, kneeling to the political correctness of this society for fear of whatever retribution or persecution, especially from the so-called cancel culture. Christian, if you're a Christian, now is a time to stand for God. You and I, we live in a time where we need to know our place, our position as believers and followers of Christ. We live in a time where we need to boldly make a stand and not kneel and compromise faith for fear of losing a business, a job, losing acceptance of the world, even losing our lives for the sake of Jesus because of our stand for truth and what the Bible says. As Jesus said, if you save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. We should be able to say with the Apostle Paul, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood and said to Nebuchadnezzar, We will not bow down, even if you and I, we need to be able to stand like them and say boldly to the world, We will not kneel, even if. So stand and take your place. Stand firm in the faith. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And after standing, what? Walk. Just as Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego began to walk towards that fiery furnace. Walk by faith, never by sight. I mean, could you imagine Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego? They were being escorted towards the fiery furnace. But they walked fearlessly, boldly, not even flinching. And perhaps some of the, maybe we can just like do a, a curtsy bow. We really don't have to kneel just, just like that. Or just, that's a little compromise. Just to, I mean, this faith business is risky. It is. Leave that kind of faith that only follows when things are comfortable and easy. That's not the kind of faith that Jesus has called us into. He says to carry your cross. Die to yourself and follow me. And you will have to walk. But you know what? You don't have to do this on your own or by yourself. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had each other. They were friends. They were a fellowship of believers. And same with us. That's why there's a church. A fellowship of believers. A fellowship of two or three is better than being on your own. As Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 says what? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three stand, strands is not quickly broken. But how much more if we all have one another, even as a church family? The body of Christ, that's who we are. We are His body and it is us that God uses to be there for each other, to minister, to serve one another. Brothers and sisters in Christ who will not only pray for you, but pray with you and stand with you. Believers with kindred hearts and spirit. Believers who will even walk with you so that you will never have to walk alone. 
Jesus did that birth and built his church for the purpose of just worshiping. So you can worship there in the comfort of your home. Jesus birthed and built a church so that people can come together. Yes, in person, in fellowship, for fellowship. To connect personally. We need that fellowship. The connection of fellow believers in Christ Jesus and sit together before the Lord and stand together for the Lord and walk together with the Lord. Because listen, who you sit with and stand with and walk with will greatly influence your life. The people you hang around with can and will dictate who you become and what you will be like. As 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says what? Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Well, you might say, well, I'm not hanging around my friends anymore. We are quarantined. Well, who are you hanging around with in your social media? Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Be careful who you sit with and stand with and walk with. Get yourself a good set of friends. Godly friends, make sure you're in fellowship with fellow believers who know the Lord and love Jesus and who obey His word. As Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. And he is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in a season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. So get in a good fellowship. Don't be an isolated Christian. That will weaken you. Do not forsake the fellowship of fellow believers. Remember, there is strength being in a community. And you and I are not called to live as Christians and to live life, I mean to live Christian life alone. So don't let any fear hinder or prevent you from coming together with brothers and sisters on the Lord. Or worse, prevent you from worshiping and serving the Lord. This is evident in the lives and testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So that when their lives were on the line for the sake of God, they stood and they stood together. And so they stood strong and boldly declared their faith and love for God. To worship God and serve Him only. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow down. Wasn't that a risky thing to say? Yes. But such is the even if kind of faith. It's a faith that knows its risks. I'd rather get in trouble as I risk following Jesus, then get in trouble in other ways. I'd rather lose my life serving the Lord than lose my life just staying inside my room. It was a risky thing, but it was more than a risky thing. It was a sure death sentence. <laughs> it was a sure death sentence. But you see, listen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew their God and they believed in their God so much so that they did not love their lives because they loved God and trusted Him with all their hearts. And naturally, the narcissistic Nebuchadnezzar was furious, so furious that he ordered to increase the heat of the fiery furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And you can read that in the rest of Daniel chapter 3. But isn't that what happens in life when we believers and followers of Jesus become bold in our faith and make a stand? The enemy of our faith, the devil, gets so mad that he increases the heat of the fiery trials or temptations and wants to burn us and discourage us, drown us, overwhelm us, to take us away farther from the Lord, even attempt to destroy us, if not our faith. But we thank God who is with us and who promised us in Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. But now, this is what the Lord says. 
He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And so King Nebuchadnezzar had the furnace heated seven times more than usual. And had the three friends thrown into the fiery furnace. The fiery furnace was so hot that it actually killed the soldiers that accompanied them. But the three Hebrew friends, they walked towards it boldly, fearlessly, unafraid even of death. Remember this. When you begin to follow God, Remember, God did not promise us a trouble-free life. He did not promise us that it will always be bright and beautiful. There will be dark clouds and rain and even a storm. But He promised that even though we walk through the storm, you can hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark because the Lord who is with you is your light. And we'll walk you through those dark times. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they walked towards the fiery furnace that meant only one thing, death. But they feared no evil. Why? Because, listen, not only did they knew their God, they knew who they were. Do you know who you are? You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's not their real names. These were the names that were given by the Babylonians that correspond to different pagan gods. And you listen, that's what the world does. The world that is influenced by the devil. The world wants to conform you to its ways and wants to change your name. They want to define you. They want to put labels on you and tell you who you are. No wonder God says, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will have a faith that dictates to the world and not the other way around. The world will throw all these labels and names on you. Jesus freak, crazy, out of touch, narrow-minded, intolerant, weak, loser, whatever. But listen, Christian, you got to know who you are. Know your true identity in Christ. Don't listen to the world or the devil that is in the world. Do you know who you are? Listen to what God says in His Word, who you are. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, you are saved by His grace through faith in Him. You are a child of the King of kings. You are a child of God, the God of salvation, so that by faith in Him, you can and will overcome. You are more than a conqueror through Him who loved Him, who loved you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is the devil that is in the world. Know your true identity in Christ. Know who you are. Shadrach's real Hebrew name is Hananiah, which means the Lord is gracious. Hananiah knows his God is gracious and that the Lord's favor, God's unmerited favor was upon him. So that when Nebuchadnezzar said, throw them in the furnace, and the Naya news God's grace was upon him and his grace was enough. So that instead of giving in to fear in a time of intense trial, though he was weak, he was strong by the grace of God. Just like what the Apostle Paul said regarding what God said to him during a time of intense suffering and weakness in his life in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hananiah knew his name. My God is gracious, and his grace is sufficient. Meshach. His Hebrew name is Mishael, which means, who is like the Lord? I could imagine 
threatened to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And he didn't flinch. I can imagine him saying to himself, I know my God and I know who I am. He is mine and I am his. And who is like the Lord my God, strong to save, faithful in love. Therefore, I will not fear when darkness falls. As the song says, because the Lord will help me scale these walls. Yes, the Lord, the Lord is my salvation. Then there's Abednego, whose Hebrew name is Azariah, which means the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. Can you say that? Let's say that. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. That's where your heart, uh, your help comes from. Psalms 121 verse 1 to 2 says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And you know this because the Lord has helped you in the past. But he's also your help in the present. As the psalmist says in Psalm 42. I mean Psalm 46. Verse 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake in their surging. And not only is your present help and help in the past, he will be your help for every tomorrow. As Psalm 42 verse 11 says, Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed in me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him, the help of my countenance and my God. Listen, the Lord is my helper, our help. He has helped you and me. God has shown up, and He is here with us, Emmanuel, and He will be with us wherever we go. God shows up. When Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were thrown into the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar thought that that was the end of them. But then when he looked into the fiery furnace, he saw something that astounded him. In amazement, he saw three guys walking unbound and unharmed. But he saw a fourth man that looked like the Son of God. And listen, it was the Son of God walking with the three believers and servants of God. Because isn't that what God promised to us, His children? That he will be with us, walk with us, so that even we walk through the valley of death, we will not fear for the Lord our God was with us. Again, as Isaiah 43 verse 2 that we read earlier, and I'd like to just read it again. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the, and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Nebuchadnezzar had the three guys come out of the furnace and they came out. And the only thing that was burned was the rope that bound them. They didn't even smell that they came from something where it burned. Listen, when you go through the fiery trials, trusting in the Lord, whatever is not of the Lord, whatever is not of faith will be burned. Whatever binds you will be loosed. And you will be set free as a testimony of the grace and the faithfulness and the power of God through faith. Nebuchadnezzar could not believe what just happened. But as a result, Nebuchadnezzar blessed God. He praised God. He worshiped God and made a decree for all Babylonians, a godless society, remember, a pagan culture, to honor the Most High God. All because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided to boldly stand for God and fearlessly declare their faith and not bow down in fear, but to worship the true and serve the true and living God, even if it meant their demise. I know who I am, and I know my God. He is mine, and I am His. Do you know your God? Do you know who you are? When you know your God, you will know who you are in Christ. If you are not in Christ, then that's where you need to start. 
If you want to know God, you need to go through Christ. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. He is the only way. No one else, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Have you truly believed in the Lord Jesus in your heart and received Him as your Lord and Savior? If not, pray to Him. And by faith believe in Him and receive Him. For as many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to be called children of God, even to those that believe in His name. Have you done that? If not, do that now. Let us pray. Our God, we need to hear. We needed to hear that. And we thank you that indeed you are the faithful God who knows us and knows our needs. And as a good shepherd, you indeed give, provide all our needs. Not just in the material sense, but more so spiritually, even mentally and emotionally. We thank you for your precious word that we can meditate on and digest it and make it part of our lives by obeying and following you so that our faith will be worked out and grow stronger and that we may have that faith, the even if kind of faith, the faith that is willing to risk whatever, a faith that will follow Jesus wherever he goes, wherever he leads us, that's not willing to lose life for your sake. You've called us to be your people at this time. Help us to live the lives that you've called us to live and to testify of you and to demonstrate that genuine faith in living bold, fearless lives for the sake of the gospel and of the glory of Jesus Christ. If you have not received Christ and you just go to church and you mentally agree with all these things, I pray to God that you'll come before him in all honesty and sincerity. Say to him, forgive me, O Lord, I have sinned. I have not really asked you and received you into my heart as Lord, but I'm doing that now. Do that now by faith. And if you do that, the Lord will come to you, will save you and forgive you, and will give you that faith, that even if kind of faith, and he will use you indeed for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, Father God, once again for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about